Are you in favor of an additional spending stimulus? And if so, how much? Well, I thought the president had a, a good idea with the jobs plan that he recently announced back in early September. Uh, this is a plan that includes a payroll tax cut, both for employers and employees, extended unemployment insurance benefits. You've got uh, 14 million unemployed people, and about 45 percent of them, uh, around uh, 6 million or so, uh, have been unemployed for at least half a year. So they need extended benefits. Uh, infrastructure, important, helping teachers and police, firefighters stay on the job. That's another piece of it. I think that's uh, exactly the right way to think about uh, what the economy needs right now. Uh, we're talking about half a trillion? 450 billion, so close, yeah. Uh, would a trillion dollar spending stimulus increase demand and employment more? It would, uh, based on um, uh, uh, the arithmetic of it, but I personally wouldn't really go there. Um, uh, Why not? Because uh, you really risk drinking from a fire hose, is the phrase, uh, if you try to do too much too fast. Um, the Recovery Act uh, was uh, an $800 billion program over about two years. And I think we were able to implement that, I, I say we because I was working for the administration back then, um, effectively with accountability and transparency and, and, and actually um, great effect in the sense that it brought the, it kept the unemployment rate from going up another couple of points. It uh, created two to three million jobs. So it was an effective program. But it was not easy to get the resources out the door, especially on the infrastructure side, um, any more quickly than we did. Uh, so a program uh, of about uh, 450 billion over the course of a year sounds about right. So one trillion would create more jobs and would cr increase well, it, uh, it, demand more, but still you're not in favor of it? Well, it's not necessarily clear. I mean, in other words, look, it's kind of like saying I like ice cream for dessert, but I'm not going to eat a, a gallon every time I sit down. Um, there are constraints. There are implementation constraints. Uh, I was just telling you about those. The ability to uh, get the resources into the system with the kind of uh, a speed and effectiveness and oversight. Did the 800 billion stimulus package increase employment? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the unemployment went up. Huh? Right. So that's a, that's what I was saying uh, before. Um, the unemployment rate went up after the stimulus was passed, but according to many independent analyses, and I include the Congressional Budget Office, which is kind of a scorekeeper in this town, uh, but along with Mark Zandi, Alan Blinder, lots of uh, folks who looked at this, it would have gone up by two to uh, at least two percentage points more, some people say two to three points. Um, uh, so it, 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 it would have, instead of looking at 9% right now on employment, we could be looking at 11%. So it kept right, things from getting worse. So we really don't know because that's a counterfactual. It's, our, it's no way to prove, but we do know one thing for sure, right? That the unemployment did go up. Yes. So the unemployment rate went up, and uh, as you say, uh, it is a counterfactual. But you, um, uh, the only way to analyze economics like this is through a counterfactual. How many jobs did it create? Uh, creator saved about two to three million jobs is the broad estimate. And how much did each job cost? Um, are in the ninety thousand range. Each job costs about ninety thousand. If you about that, if you figure it out, it, it, about that, if you do the math over would it the would have been simpler just to hand out the money. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't work. It, it, that's how much you, you had per job. But if you start factoring in the infrastructure that you're left with, okay, so there were uh, many miles of roads and highways, airports that were fixed, water systems, communications, um, all of that productive capacity is now in the economy for good. And if you just gave people a bunch of money, you wouldn't have uh, the improved infrastructure. If you factor that in, the cost per job goes considerably uh, down. You have said that in order for a stimulus spending to work, it has to be accelerated stimulus spending. So wouldn't a trillion be more accelerated than 450 well, million? Well, let me explain. What I, that, that's not quite uh, what I uh, uh, meant to say. Uh, oh. let, me, let me explain what it is that I think I actually said. Um, if you, uh, it's a concept called fiscal impulse. If you're spending 100 billion right now to keep uh, uh, in stimulus this year, 
and next year you also spend a hundred billion. Um, there's no new additional sp stimulus, no new what economists call fiscal impulse. You spent 100 last year, you spent 100 this year. So you're keeping your foot on the accelerator exactly where it is. If you go from 100 to 120, then you have 20 billion new stimulus, sort of additional impetus for growth. So that's what I mean by fiscal impulse. Well, 450 is less than the 800. It seems like we're decelerating, not accelerating. I think that's true, and I think that, uh, I think that that's... Um, uh, uh, has to be looked at in the following sense. Remember, it's 800 billion over two years. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of split that in half. I see. Uh, and therefore, another 450 or so, I don't know if it gets you much. And there's a little bit of a fiscal impulse in there, but not a lot. I mean, you have to balance what you're doing here with uh, uh, the political realities, with fiscal rectitude, with a lot of factors. Are there a lot any of moving parts. Are there any negative consequences to having a stimulus spending package? Like increasing spending to at stimulate a time, the economy? Not at a time like this. I think, the, uh, I think where you would find negative consequences is if the economy is running at full capacity and you try to do more. I mean, think of it as a glass of water. If the glass of water is full, that means the economy is at full capacity, your factories are all, are all running at, at top gear, uh, your unemployment rate is very low instead of very high, uh, your uh, inflation is, is, is up, then it's like a glass of water that's filled to the brim and you're trying to pour in more. Right now we have a glass of water that's you know, half full at best, so pouring in more uh, is, is uh, I'd say, an unequivocally good uh, economic policy. When you put in additional stimulus spending, don't you have to uh, pay more interest on the money that you use to do this stimulus? Well, if you don't, if you, that's only if you borrow. Right. So if, if well, you increase a, the deficit. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's talk about that. Sure. Let's see, let's see where, does the, where does the government get this money for this uh, stimulus spending? So if you increase the budget deficit, that means the government is borrowing in credit markets, typically by you know, selling treasury bills. So that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, what we've been doing. And uh, that uh, uh, does incur uh, a de higher deficit and interest payments, no question about it. But the important part is that um, if you have the economy growing more quickly than it otherwise would, remember the glass is half full now at best, um, so uh, if you do this right, you're going to get more economic growth than you would otherwise. That growth itself spins off some extra revenues, and that helps uh, reduce uh, the uh, that helps increase revenues and reduce uh, the deficit you're facing. What about this capital that is used to uh, lend to the uh, government? If it wasn't lent to the government, would it not be available t for private enterprise to invest, and wouldn't that uh, stimulate the economy as well? Sure. Just the same. Every dollar that that yeah. you that you lend to the government is a dollar that's available for the private that, enterprise. That, that's to not not the case now. Not it's the, not case, the case. No, not the case at all now. And in fact, by the way, uh, if you uh, look right now, we have a budget deficit that's somewhere around uh, nine. It was at eight or nine percent of GDP. So we have a significant budget deficit. Uh, at last I looked, it was uh, in the one to two, one point two, one point three trillion range. So large budget deficit, no question about it. But interest rates are very low. If what you described was going on, interest rates would be high because there'd be competition for scarce capital. Interest rates are bumping along historical lows. And we know that uh, uh, private credit markets are sitting on large cash reserves, particularly the corporate sector. So that dynamic, that you, it, again, many of your questions are kind of conflating a full employment economy where these kinds of measures would be counterproductive with a very underemployed economy where they're helpful. So the capital that's used to lend to the government is not available for the private enterprise, right? Wrong. The capital that is uh, the, the capital that's in the system, the private enterprise is sitting on over a trillion dollars right. of private capital that's not being used by either the private sector or the government. So your nobody confusion, uses it. Yeah, it's sitting. It's not being used. It's the banks on don't the, lend it out. That's the problem. It's sitting on the sidelines. It's not being lent. It's not being spent. It's not being invested. That's one of the reasons why we're facing such slow growth right now. And what's remarkable is that. The interest rates for borrowing this capital are very low. The, the Federal Reserve has seen to that. So all the incentives are telling businesses borrow and invest, but they're not. Why are they not? Because that glass is half empty. There's not enough demand in the economy. Well, it is true that they are investing, but they're not investing as much as you think they should. Is that correct? 
Uh, no, I mean, it's and not the so banks much. are lending, but they're not right, lending right. as much as you would like them to. Well, it's not just as much as I would like them to. Well, you would but like uh, as much as the economy. You think that they should? No, as much as the economy needs them to in order to come out of this recession. Um, and when I say the banks are, le of course, the banks are always lending. I'm not saying it's zero. Right. My point is that, uh, and this is widely agreed upon. My point is that there is are large reserves of capital that could be used for investment, but aren't. I mean, do you disagree with that point? Well, what I'm trying to figure out is, should your judgment be substituted for the judgment of the bank? Maybe they want to do a conservative approach yeah, and, no, not, and not leverage themselves so much and make less loans. You're saying, no, go ahead, leverage no, yourself more and that's let, not make what, no, more no, loans. That's and not if what you I'm don't, saying. I'll take your money and the government that will do it not, for you. That is not what I'm saying. And no. Let me clarify. I'm not at all saying, I, I think the banks will lend when they have profitable uh, projects to lend into. Okay, if the government borrows all this money, and um, we've already borrowed uh, 14 trillion more than we've taken in, right? We have the national debt is like 14 trillion, right? Correct. Uh, we have to do. We have Actually, to let me clarify that the national debt is 14 trillion. If you include about, I think it's between three and four trillion that the government owes to itself. That shouldn't be counted. No, 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 it shouldn't be counted. It, it, the, it, it, if we're talking about the debt held by the public, that's about, I think it's about 10 or 11 trillion right now. It's about 70% of GDP. What you're talking about is, is uh, uh, the gross debt, which includes um, uh, the Social Security surplus. So that's just in bonds somewhere. That's not debt held by the public. It, be careful not to conflate those two. So if that part isn't included, why do we have to increase the debt limit? The debt limit is, it's a good question, the debt limit is a very foolish thing. Uh, we shouldn't have a debt limit in the first place. The debt limit is But we did, we did have to increase there, it, well, right? Uh, because exactly. they were saying that it was $14 trillion. And you're right. No, you're right about that. And many people at the time, and I think I, I, I may have been one of them, uh, it's, I always thought this was a good argument. I don't remember I made it myself. Many people at the time were saying, this is crazy. We're ha we have a, first of all, a debt ceiling debt limit doesn't even make sense in contemporary fiscal economics, but we have a debt limit that includes three or four trillion dollars of debt that the government owes to itself. It's, mean it, 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 it's, it's, it's bonds that the government is holding in order that it owes to the social security system. So it's simply money from one pocket to another. 